Coming up, a disagreement between Kentucky's governor and lieutenant governor comes to a head in Frankfurt. And President Trump is making a trip to the bluegrass. The FBI gave us a look at how they are preparing for the event. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is Tuesday, August the 20th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News this morning. It's 633 right now, and when I walked outside of my door just a little bit before 4 this morning, it was humid and gross already. Let's bring in Brandon this morning to get a breakdown of what to expect on this Tuesday. Brandon, good morning. Good morning, and mild and muggy for sure, but a beautiful start to the day across the region. Let's start with the Pikeville Medical Center camera overlooking beautiful downtown Pikeville, and look at that sunrise. That's beautiful this morning. Not a cloud in the sky in most areas, and it's going to be a nice day. We go back to visibility. Of course, we're seeing some local issues there down two parts of, actually north of Pikeville there, along Moorhead and uh, Ashland there along I-64, and down to the south in the Cumberland Valley. So just be careful this morning. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s, dew points in the 60s and 70s. So when they're close, that close to air temperature, that means it's air you can wear for sure. Ice coffee forecast, a large on tap for you today as temperatures are right around 70. Some patchy fog gives way to sunny skies early, and then we'll see temperatures climb to about 92 later on today. The sun gives way to storm chances later on, and some of those could be strong to severe. We'll talk more about those and to talk about some other current conditions here in the, full, or in the forecast in just a couple of minutes. All righty, Brennan, we'll be back with you. Well, this is new this morning. Hazard police officers say someone broke into AT&T earlier this morning and stole several items. An official posted this photo from store security footage on the department's Facebook page. Police are asking people to help identify this person you see on your screen right now. If you have more information, please call the Hazard Police Department at 606-436-2222. A disagreement between Kentucky's governor and lieutenant governor comes to a head in Frankfurt. Lieutenant Governor Janine Hampton sued the governor's office last week over the firing of two of her staff members. She says having and handling her own staff is a common courtesy. Hillary Thornton sat in yesterday as each side made their arguments in court. I am a little insulted by all of this. The typically quiet lieutenant governor grabbing headlines with a tweet back in May talking about battling dark forces. Who in their right mind would decide it's a good thing to leave a, a sitting active lieutenant governor with one staffer? It is a role she says she's given her all to serving Kentuckians is why she says she agreed to run with Governor Matt Bevin back in 2015. I said, Matt, are you bringing me on to be a ribbon cutter or are you bringing me on to work? And he had the right answer. I'm bringing you on to work. She says that work is being impeded by a lack of staff after the firing of her chief of staff more than six months ago and her deputy chief of staff nearly three months ago. Well, this is a uh, what we would consider a minor disagreement among two friends. In well, this. My, my friends don't treat me this way. I'll say I'll just say that the judge not making a decision on whether or not to reappoint the staffers in court today, asking both parties to get together and try to resolve this all outside of court. And we asked the attorneys for both sides if they think that is something that is possible. Really don't know. We'll do as the court is directed and explore whether it is. We will certainly uh, follow the court's directive and get together and talk. Uh, I don't uh, know what the expectations uh, that I have are, though. Attorneys for the governor making their point several times in court that the fact is the governor is who initially appointed the two staffers, even giving one of them a raise. Those actions, they say, were never met with objections for being out of the governor's authority. In Frankfurt, Hillary Thornton, WYMT Mountain News. Now, Lieutenant Governor Hampton says despite all of this, she does support Governor Bevin in his reelection effort. Well, President Trump is making a trip to the bluegrass. He will make a stop to speak at the American Veterans 75th National Convention in Louisville tomorrow. WYMT's, Mar WYMT's Maria Ansari explains how the FBI plans to deal with this presidential visit. The last time President Donald Trump was in Louisville was 2017 at Freedom Hall. We are preparing new executive actions. Around 15,000 people attended this rally. On Wednesday, it'll be a much smaller group. We're looking at pretty close to 2,000. 
They'll be members of AMVETS, an organization that serves veterans. The president will be speaking in this Galt House ballroom. As we look at the entire 360 degree environment. Rich Ferretti from the United States Secret Service Louisville Field Office says it's been all hands on deck since they found out the president is visiting. Ferretti says the Galt House will be open to guests and the public, but the Secret Service will secure the hotel and restrict where the president will speak. Bomb sweeps, uh, canine explosive sweeps, uh, parking garages underneath the hotel, ballrooms above this, this room. President Trump will be landing in Louisville at the Kentucky Air National Guard Wednesday afternoon. There's not that many ways to get downtown, so there'll be some minor traffic disruptions. You can also expect road closures around the Galt House, no aircraft over the president's motorcade or downtown Louisville, and no traffic on the Ohio River during the president's visit. Ferretti says the Secret Service is bringing in extra agents, x-ray machines, armored vehicles, and equipment. They'll also be monitoring social media for any threat. Now, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has reauthorized a ban on travel to North Korea for U.S. citizens. A State Department spokesperson made the announcement Monday, citing concerns over arrest and long-term detention in North Korea. Pompeo has simply reauthorized the existing geographic travel restrictions on the use of a U.S. passport to travel in, through, or to North Korea. Anyone looking to visit or travel through North Korea must apply for a passport with a special validation from the Department of State. Law enforcement agencies across the country are on high alert for domestic terror threats after one suspect was arrested in Chicago over the weekend for allegedly threatening an attack on an abortion clinic. This follows arrests in unrelated cases in Connecticut, Florida and Ohio. Meg Oliver has more on what these suspects were allegedly planning. With a smirk, 20-year-old James Reardon listened via video conference as his attorney entered his plea. They are not guilty, please, to both counts. Police arrested the self-described white nationalist Friday after uncovering a threatening social media post showing him shooting a semi-automatic rifle and targeting Jews. Reardon was interviewed for a documentary during the deadly protests in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017. I want a homeland for white people, and I think every race should have a homeland for their own race. In addition to Reardon, authorities have arrested six other men, each accused in separate cases of threatening to attempt a mass shooting over the last two weeks. 25-year-old Tristan Wicks was arrested in Florida last Friday. Authorities there say he sent chilling text messages to his ex-girlfriend saying, a good 100 kills would be nice, I already have a location. The arrests since the El Paso Walmart shooting indicate local and federal authorities are on the lookout for any domestic charges. It's very complicated to monitor these threats. Not George Saleem of... tracks extremism for the Anti-Defamation League. They have seen a spike in the number of online threats. Is this a time for the public to step up? This is an all hands on deck. Citizens, law enforcement, state, local and federal authorities, everyone needs to be more vigilant about the nature and scope of violent content and threats that they're seeing in online forums. All of the suspects have been charged with a variety of crimes ranging from aggressive menacing to making a threat to commit a mass shooting. But the FBI tells us they are still considering whether they will pursue federal charges. Meg Oliver, CBS News, New York. They have all been charged with a variety of crimes ranging from aggressive menacing to making a threat to commit a mass shooting. Forecast this morning starting off with a beautiful scene outside the WIMT studios. A little touch of fog starting to form here out over on the horizon of the mountains. No surprise there. It seems like we've had fog. I said this a lot of times every day this summer it seems like, but a lot of uh, patchy dense fog around this morning, especially down south and up to the north there along the I-64 corridor between Moorhead and Ashland. So just be careful this morning. Watch out for school buses. Give yourself some extra time on the roads. Temperatures are soupy this morning. Doesn't look that bad on the actual air temperatures. When you factor in the dew points, the humidity, it's about the same. So again, it's air you can basically swim in this morning. So uh, again, just be ready for that as you hit the door. It's going to smack you in the face. 92 today. That's going to smack you in the face too. Some sunshine this morning and chances for scattered showers and storms this afternoon and this evening. Some of those could be on the stronger side. We'll talk more about that in the full forecast here in just a couple of minutes. We'll all righty, Brandon, we'll be back with you. Well, we will have stories that are trending on WYMT.com next. As always, thank you for joining us right here on Mountain News this morning.
Coming up, the latest on a Whitley County man accused of murdering his girlfriend earlier this year.